Hello, massage nerds. Today I'm going to be doing the neuromuscular theory loss and how uh, we transition to pain and how that happens. It's very important for me to teach this because it was actually brought to my attention recently that I've been doing just uh, uh, videos for students and that is true because of lockdown and all that, you know, and going online to teach. I've done a series on pathologies, kinesiology, reviews of anatomy and physiology. And I've had several people from YouTube, you know, contact me that they want to have some CEU classes. And trust me, I've done ASMR videos, but that's not what I do. I have not survived 32 years in the massage therapy industry doing massage, uh, you know, uh, Swedish massage. So my specialty is, you know, uh, it's uh, eclectic. I do neuromuscular, medical, you know, and I do, of course, we teach, you know, uh, Swedish at the college. However, I wanted to take it up a notch for those of you that are looking for uh, other studies and that um, want to learn more specific work, which is what I do, a little bit more specific work. So to start at the beginning, it's very important for you to learn the uh, neuromuscular theory laws. And these laws, um, they're very important because it's the brain, the nervous system, and the muscles connecting. That's where they join. You engage the nervous system from the beginning, from the very beginning, from the moment that your client walks in, from the moment that you touch them. You're engaging the nervous system that's one of the reasons why I always tell you guys at the end to do the nerve ending strokes, you know, to let your client know that they can relax again. Because now, as I explain these theories to you, you know, you're going to see the progression of how you can have pain in one area and before you know it, it's all over your body when it's chronic. And I've had, and I'm sure you guys have too, have had, you know, clients that are chronic and you'll understand why. So let me start by explaining to you Hilton's law. Hilton's law is the nerve that supplies the joint, also supplies the muscle, the skin, and the tendons that, you know, that the nerve goes through. So let's say the musculocutaneous nerve will serve your biceps brachii, your brachialis, your corrective brachialis, and also the, uh, you know, the shoulder joint. So you know that's what that law means that if the pain is coming from a deeper you know tissue like your tendon where the musculocutaneous nerve goes through it's going to affect even your muscle your joint your tendon and even the skin i have had clients where even their skin hurts and so that's because of the hilton's law and now you understand that one now fluger's laws there's uh, actually five of them and it's the progress progression of pain and how you know it can get worse and uh, Pfluger was a, a German physicist back in the late 1800s to um, early 1900s and he discovered you know how pain travels and again this has to do with a nerve and with a muscle connection so Pfluger's law of unilateral unilar <laughs> unilaterality unilaterality Pfluger's law the first stage of unilaterality is that uh, where you hurt yourself like let's say uh, you pulled you know you were bending over and you pulled you know your quadratus lumborum then it's gonna hurt there it's gonna be on one side that's the first stage now the second stage is if, it, if, if the pain keeps getting really worse, then you come up to the law of symmetry. And what that means is that when the stimulus from the nervous system is sufficiently increased, then you start to hurt in similar muscles on the opposite side. So symmetry, you start here and then it's gonna move on to the other side. So however, with a law of symmetry you still hurt where you originally hurt yourself if you hurt your left side of your ql that's still going to hurt more than the right side now the third stage of pfluger's law is the uh, pfluger's law of intensity 
And when the nervous system stimulates it and it continues to get higher, then the side that you didn't injure yourself with will hurt initially as much as the side that you didn't. So I'm sure all of you had had clients that come in and say, you know, just my low back hurts and they really injured this side. And when you go in and work on them, you find out that, you know, probably the left side's a little bit worse, but they it radiates all the way to the right side and both sides hurt. So that's the law of intensity. It's intensified on both sides. Now, the fourth stage is the law of radiate Pfluger's law. These, I'm talking about Pfluger's law of radiation. When the nervous system stimulus continues again to increase, the impulses travel up the spine you know activating the centrifugal you know centrifugal you know towards the brain nerves the uh the afferent nerves remember afferent are you know the ones with sensory nerves that send the stimulus collecting information and sending it to the brain and once you know it activates it can activate old injuries because it's a rat already traveling up to the brain you know sending the information to the brain so that's the law of Pfluger's law of radiation because it's radiating, radiating up. The fifth of Pfluger's law is the law of generalization. And that is when the, in, the stimulus has been so intense for so long that the nervous system has already you know, increased that it's now propagated to the medulla oblongata. Now the medulla oblongata, remember, is part of the brain, you know, the brain stem and that's uh causing it's it's the mm, let me see the the medulla oblongata is the gateway between the information between the brain and the spinal cord so once it gets to the medulla oblongata it's severe it's chronic and it's you know everywhere now it's generalized everywhere the pain can be everywhere in their body so those are the five laws of Lugar's law of progression it starts on one side the side you hurt then you start feeling it on the opposite side but it doesn't hurt as much the third stage is, is it hurts on both sides now just as much and then you know the law of radiation where it starts going up that nerve sending it to the brain until it gets to the medulla oblongata where the brain nervous system and you know and the spinal cord you know communicates so now the that's the progression you can see the progression of the pain this is why it's important for clients to come in early when they have pain and not wait until they're so bad you know till it becomes chronic now the next law is arndt schultz law and i'm going to spell them for you because i know these are difficult arndt schultz law is uh, a moderate low level stimuli you know activates physiological processes and strong stimuli inhibits them and what that means is if you if you do light you know a, a light massage it'll be you know uh, energetic and it'll you know it'll stimulate you but if you go specific and with deeper pressure it inhibits it and this is why when you give a deep tissue massage you know people feel sedated you know they kind of feel a little bit you know out of it and i with this law this is how i like to teach that i believe in specific work not the deep tissue where you go and hurt the person and you take them beyond the level of tolerance because you are engaging the nervous system and then the nervous system the body starts guarding itself if you're applying too much pressure the body will start guarding itself so then the 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 tissues it, it's contraproductive so you want to make sure and stay at a level of comfort for your client and remember every client is different i use the scale from one to ten ten being the most pain they tolerate and i mean the most pain they tolerate you know and then zero or one being the lowest level so you try to keep it at a five where it's comfortable let the body lets you work and it's not pushing you away so you know aren't schultz law is you know that too much pressure will inhibit the nervous system and you don't get as good of a result and then light pressure you know stimulates it too so that's the Arndt Schultz law. Let me spell that for you. A R N D T and Schultz S C H U L T 
TZ. So that's the Arndt Schultz law. And Pfluger's laws, those are spelled kind of funny too because those are German names. It's P F L U G E R apostrophe S, Pfluger's law. So we only have one, which is the all or none. All or none responses is when the, the now you guys remember this from AMP. I hope you remember this from AMP. The nerves are either activated or not. You know, it's like you turn on the light switch. Either you have the light on or you have the light off. There's no just engaging a little bit of the nervous system. Once you activate, you know, uh, the nerve, it is complete, you know, completely stimulated. Uh, it's not partially stimulated. So the all or none law is the nerves will either be, you know, have a full response or no response. So, you know, once you start, you know, working very specifically, you are going to engage more of the nervous system. So this is why you want to be careful and keep the comfort level of the client, you know, at a five. You don't want to overdo it. And this is part of your investigation. If you have a client that comes in and they only feel pain on one side, well, you know, it's barely the first stage and you can probably, you know, um, just work very specific around that area. Uh, another thing is like if the, you know, if like, let's go back to Hilton's law, the musculocutaneous nerve serves the uh, uh, biceps brachia, the corecubrachialis, and the brachialis. So you already know that that, according to Hilton's law, if the nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, it also uh, goes through the, uh, you know, corecubrachialis and the brachialis, more than likely those muscles are affected too. So if somebody comes in, you know, with a pulled or a strained biceps, you want to make sure and work the other muscles that are related to that nerve because they will also, you know, they might be, their tendons might be damaged or might be injured. So make sure and check, you know, everything that goes through that nerve. And this is why it's important, guys, to learn the laws to learn the neuromuscular, you know, theory laws. They're very important laws because this is going to take your your work uh, to a different level. You know, like I said, I'm just getting started. I hopefully I get to st start showing you some videos on specific work because, like I said, um, Swedish massage is really not what I do in my private practice. Uh, once in a while, but most of it is uh, neuromuscular. That's how you know and this is important because that's how you become specialized and this is how you can take it up a notch i hope this helps you leave me comments what you think of this and what do you think about me progressing and taking it now to a different level i'm excited i'm sure you guys are too because a lot of people have asked me you know and when they mention like hey you know you just teach to students well yes but in my private teachings I, it's different. So I hope that you like this and that you're excited like I am. And until the next time, create a great day.